you, you know, question. No worries. Okay. Well, good afternoon, and it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much to the Seminole County League of Women Voters for inviting me, and of course for inviting Chief Rooney. Um, I'd like to just give you a little bit of an overview. I do chair the Gun Safety Committee for the state of Florida, and we've been going for almost two years now, and just came off of uh, a, bi a big fight uh, this past session against these campus carry bills. And so I'd like to give you a little bit of an overview of the bills before uh, we move on to what's going on in this coming session. These two bills, which were filed uh, by Representative Greg Stubbe, who is out of Sarasota, and Senator Greg Evers, who is out of the Ocala area, have been coming back for, I think this is the third year in a row now. But last year, they got further than they had previously. 4005, Senate Bill 176, we did defeat them with the help of uh, our senators who stopped them from moving through uh, the Judiciary Committee into the Rules Committee and then onto the floor. But now they are back in the same form. And, and let me just back up for a minute. This past session, they went through all of the committees in the House that they needed to clear. They were poised, HB 4005 was poised to go to the House floor. After going through two Senate committees, they wound up in judiciary where Senator De La Portilla said we don't have the votes in the Senate and the bill stopped there. And this is after an enormous amount of public pressure, thousands of phone calls, uh, emails, visits to legislators, many, many editorials and letters to the editor. Those really helped us and our senators helped us to make sure that these did not get to the floor because we were warned over and over, if, this, if these bills get to the floor, they will pass. So they're back now. We expected this to happen. The same sponsors, Representative Stubbe and Senator Greg Evers, the bills are exactly the same. And all, all the bill does is it's, it's very liberal. It takes the ban off of weapons on campus and reverses it, saying that concealed carry permit holders who must be 21 years old, pass a background check, are, would be allowed under this, if this passes, to carry their firearms anywhere on campus. And currently, that's no restriction. You know, dormitories, would they be able to carry them there? You know, there are satellite campuses everywhere. Uh, there are no restrictions. It's a wide open, uh, these are wide open bills. And it's very concerning. Another, um, other than the risk to life, uh, the most important risk is the economic impact. Now, we don't have the final numbers in from the university system yet, but the economic impact on just the state college system, the 28 state colleges, and Valencia is one of them, is estimated at $74 million. And this would be, could you explain that a little why that, that would cost? Yeah, again, good afternoon. Um, Basically, right now, I have 100 officers that work all the campuses. Valencia is pretty big, it's growing. Uh, we have 60,000 uh, plus students now. So we have uh, six campuses throughout Osceola, Winter Park, uh, east, on the east side of time, town west. Um, think about building in Poinciana. So I mean, we're growing. So we have unarmed officers right now. I have 100 unarmed officers. They don't have guns. They don't have chemical agents, they don't have batons. They don't need them because it's a safe, they're very, very safe campuses. Now, if I had to uh, convert those 100 officers to swarm, my budget would go from like 3.4 to 7.9 million dollars. So from 3.4 right now, that's my current budget, to 7.9 million dollars. So uh, there, is, there is cost associated with that. Because why? I can't send an officer, if we get a call about a gun in the library and a backpack, I can't send an officer who doesn't have a gun to, to go investigate that. They're going to look at me and say, Rooney, are you crazy? Would you do that? And I wouldn't do it. And I, I was in law enforcement for 28 years. 
So the bottom line is, we it, it, there is an economic impact. Uh, people want to kind of say, no, that's up to in, each individual college, but it's, it all comes down to, it's common sense. You know, we have to arm our, if this passes, well, we're gonna have to have some more armed officers, obviously, on the campuses. Patty? Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are some other concerns, too. We have stand your ground in Florida. This would apply on campus. So isn't that just what we need? Yes. Students have been drinking, someone gets upset. Oh, you know, you're, you're dating my girlfriend, and one thing leads to another. Not a good situation. Uh, and, of course, this would bring more guns onto campus. Right now, guns are carried, if at all, by campus law enforcement. Now we introduce guns, and it's students, teachers. There's no restriction. And you just have to be a concealed carry permit holder. So let's take a look at who is behind who is behind the bills. Well, we've already talked about Representative Stubbe, who believes that just because you are a law-abiding citizen, and this is what we hear from the gun lobby a lot, law-abiding citizens should not have to check their Second Amendment rights just because they walk onto a college campus. Their argument is you can carry guns in malls, you can carry guns in movie theaters. Of course, you know, we know how that has worked out in a few places. Uh, so why should I have to, you know, give up my Second Amendment rights just because I walk onto a campus? And of course, a campus environment is very different from those, from those locations. Very, very different. And Greg Evers. Uh, Greg Evers believes, just like the uh, gun lobby, that quote-unquote gun-free zones invite criminals to go into them and you know commit all sorts of crimes but as we'll we'll talk about a little bit later campuses which are currently gun-free zones are very safe if you compare to off-campus areas dennis baxley who is on the uh, house criminal justice committee by the way these two bills were uh we're, they hit the first committees last Wednesday. Of course, our legislative session is starting early, it's starting in January, so committee hearings started next, last week. And on the very first day, September 16th, these bills were heard in back-to-back -back meetings in the House and Senate criminal justice uh, committees. That is virtually unheard of. On the very first day, in two committee hearings back-to-back. -back. So, of course, the thinking is they may have wanted to stretch those of us testifying against the bill pretty thin when it came to um, attending these hearings, but we worked it out, but they did pass. The, uh, the Senate committee passed the bill five to three, and the House committee passed it eight to five. So they, they are on their way now to higher education committees. But Representative Baxley is among those who's very much in favor of the bill, and as you can see his statement here, Boy, if you're going to have out of control parties, you really need to get, bring a gun, which makes all sorts of sense, right? That that you know actually uh, reminds me of a a very very sad story. Back in 2010-2011, our current um, president of Florida State University, John Thrasher, was the Senate Rules Chairman. And there was a late night fraternity party. This was an off-campus fraternity, but there was a late night party. And what, if, what do students do at parties? I mean, they're young, they're experiencing, you know, um, freedom for the first time, in many cases alcohol, in many cases drugs. Anyway, the students were partying, and one of the young men at this party said, hey, hey, I've got this, you know, firearm that my brother got, you know, I want to show it to everybody. Well, he brought it out, and there were these two twin sisters there, um, Ashley and her sister, Amy Cowie. And he brought it out and was showing it off and accidentally the gun went off and uh, Ashley Cowie died in her sister's arms. So now there's a death, the family is devastated and the young man is now in prison. So how is this going to make campuses safer, right? This will be part of the quote unquote collateral damage, you know, that, that those who want guns on campus are not thinking about, accidents. So who's behind this? Okay, who's behind the legislators pushing these bills? Students for Concealed Carry. They formed after the 2007 Virginia Tech mass shooting. 
Uh, they came together and said, we, we want to prevent this from ever happening again. So they, they formed their own sort of grassroots movement. They're very active using the court system. They filed a successful suit against the Colorado University System Board of Directors, rather, uh, because they wanted guns on campus, concealed carry on campus, and they won. The other organization is Florida Carry. We're starting to see these carry groups pop up. Texas Carry, Georgia Carry, Florida Carry. They're also very, uh, very keen on using the court systems. And they recently were heard before the First District Court of Appeals uh, in Tallahassee, who was looking at their argument that guns should be allowed in dormitories because if you can keep a gun in your house, then why shouldn't you be able to keep a gun in your dormitory, which is your temporary housing? And so the Court of Appeals is hearing that right now. And of course, the big gun, so to speak, against campus carry is Marion Hammer and the National Rifle Association. She is the two-time past president, and she is the Florida uh, chief lobbyist for the NRA. The NRA, very powerful organization, and they are uh, very, very aggressively pushing these bills. They've come out and said, we are not going to give up until these bills pass. And it is not just a Florida effort, but it's a nationwide effort. They were introduced in 15 states this past session. They they more or less failed. They did get it did get through Texas, but in a watered down fashion, which gives the university the um, the decision to either opt in or opt out. But the, the gun lobby is not satisfied with that, and they claim that they're going to come back with the expanded version, which is what they wanted in the first place. But um, you know, she testifies at many of the hearings, saying that you know murderers and rapists are lurking behind the shadows and campuses and. You know, we've got to arm our students to protect uh, our, our young women from being raped. Well, let's see. Is that true that campuses are really that unsafe? This is the Orlando breakdown. Look, off-campus crime in 2013, this is using the Cleary Act, versus on-campus. Murder 17 in 2013. Murder on campus, zero. And Chief Rudy, you could probably talk to this too. Yeah, and, and I just, I'll speak specifically for Valencia. Um, we only had 12 incidents throughout all our campuses last year that met the clear requirements. Now, I'm not to say that um, iPhones and iPads and so forth don't disappear, you know, uh, get, get stolen. But Cleary, as far as Cleary, the, the more uh, violent crimes and so forth, and they, they, we also have to track alcohol and drugs. We only had 12 crimes. Uh, that met Cleary uh, mandate requirements um, and out of all of our campuses last year. I was shocked. I spent 28 years with the Orlando Police Department. I worked my way from officer to, to chief. I saw a lot in that, those 28 years. I saw a lot of crime. And I wasn't sure how, um, you know, really not never working on a campus, um, what kind of crime I was going to see on, on college campuses. But I'm telling you, and I'm speaking from my heart, um, very safe, extremely safe. Um, environments. Um, like I said, you, you, we have that from time to time, but as far as sexual batteries and stabbings and shootings and gang violence, none. None. So um, it's all hyped up, I, th I believe, uh, to make it, to make their case a little bit stronger. Thank you. So, you know, we do see that, that, that and the gun lobby is very good at taking facts and sort of manipulating them and to what they want the facts to be, which really aren't facts anymore. Okay, so the, the argument they're using, they're really coming out strongly with this. There's been several young women at the hearings this past session and last week who said that they've been assaulted and a gun would have helped. But is that really true? Is that really true? Because first of all, the majority of sexual assaults are among people who know each other. Date rape, alcohol is often involved. Someone you trust. Are you going to necessarily be carrying a concealed weapon when you go out with someone that you trust? You're not necessarily gonna be prepared to defend yourself. Um, of course, I mentioned the alcohol. One in 10 rapes involves a weapon. Now, and, and I'll get to that, that in just a minute. Uh, who else is gonna be armed? if you arm the potential victim? Yeah. The assailant. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, 
the assailant, right. And uh, even though there have been studies that have come out showing that defensive gun use is, are, is often successful, it's highly been discredited by, um, most recently, the Harvard School of Public Health. But here is what, what can often happen, is that here we have this Christy Salters Martin, a boxer, tough. She's come out and talked about it, that she was shot with her own gun. She's a domestic violence survivor. And it's more often than not that that gun is going to be taken and used against the females. How does the gun lobby, since really, who wants these bills? The gun lobby and the legislators who uh, the gun lobby is backing, basically. Uh, how, do they, how do they use their influence? Because Chief Rooney will tell you the entire state college system is against these bills. The Board of Governors and University System, all campus police chiefs, students, parents, United Faculty of Florida, which represents 7,000 university professors. How is this happening? Well, one reason is, is the NRA is the most powerful lobbying association in the country, and they have a lot of money. And of course, politicians fundraise, we all know that. Um, they mobilize membership and supporters. They are really excellent at marketing, and they are very astute at using fear as a way to market. You know, be careful because the government's going to come after your guns. Buy more guns, etc. And one of the interesting, um, I went to a recent uh, presentation uh, on the NRA and what is behind this push to get guns on the campuses because there, there was a feeling for a while that. This is just a distraction against background checks, but really it's not. This is part of the strategy to get more young people to buy guns, and that is because, you know, hunting used to be a very popular uh, pastime, I'll call it, in the United States, and there's less and less hunting. And so the gun lobby and the gun manufacturers, they're pretty much one and the same, they need to sell more firearms. So if they're losing their, their hunters and not as many people anyway are buying guns, more people are buying multiple guns, but their the gun um, purchases are down overall in this country. How are they gonna keep going as a business, right, as an industry? Well, they're going to do what the League of Women Voters is trying to do, right? We're trying to what, diversify, we're trying to attract more young people, attract more young men attract more ethnicities, guess what? The gun lobby is trying to do the same thing. And so that is why you see them going onto campuses and trying to introduce guns. And that is why you see in the cases of hunting, them introducing silencers because of the cool technology that young people like to use. They're trying to normalize <coughs> gun use among young people. And where better to do it than on a college campus? They also are very good at applying <coughs> political pressure. Last session, or this past year, uh, all of these, these are 10 university police chiefs. For example, this, the young woman sitting next to the gentleman on the end is the chief of police at Uni uh, University of Florida who testified at this particular hearing in the House. They showed up in support and a show of unity against these bills. And uh, the chief of university police, or University of Florida police testified. Guess what happened? Really? Ethics complaints oh. filed by Florida oh. Carey. Oh. And what was the charge? Well, hey, you're not supposed to be traveling on uh, university state time unless you are a registered lobbyist. And hey, by the way, you're traveling on state time when you should be working <coughs> and you're taking taxpayer money to do it. So they filed this ethics complaint, but it didn't hold water and it was dismissed. It was a form, though, of intimidation, right? To try to get them to back off. You know, they, they may have known that they weren't going to be successful legally, but it was intimidation. Who all is against this? As I mentioned, the state university system, student government associations. International Association of Campus Law, the list goes on. 
and on Florida PTA, Americans for Responsible Solutions, the Brady Campaign, Michael Bloomberg's group, Every Town for Gun Safety, the campaign to keep guns off campus, who we partnered with this past session working against these bills, and of course, the League of Women Voters of Florida. Why are these bills bad? Let's refute the arguments that the concealed carry permit holders are trained to defend themselves and others. And I bet Chief Rooney is going to talk about that. I will, sure. Students are not police, okay? How are they supposed to tell the good guy from the bad guy when multiple guns are drawn, right? Police officers. Guns and alcohol, drugs and guns, or excuse me, don't, they don't mix. Also, here's something else that, that needs to be, we need more attention to be brought to this issue. Did you know that in 2013, there were almost double the number of suicides with guns in the United States than homicides? Suicide is the second highest cause of death among college-aged people. It's a terrible problem. Students on campus are often away from home for the first time. They're under a lot of stress. Maybe they're homesick, peer pressure, you know, uh, drive to succeed, alcohol and drugs. You've got a real problem if you introduce guns because guns make it more likely. Suicide is often an impulsive, impulsive uh, act, and a gun makes it all too easy. And uh, suicide attempts with firearms are 85 to 90 percent successful. So we have suicide, gun accidents, financial costs. What can we do? We can do it again this year. We can defeat these bills. Please visit your legislators in their districts. It's important to develop relationships with them. And also, when they're in Tallahassee, they are so busy. They're often distracted, and you, you'll get an aid if, if, if you talk to anybody. Call them, email, uh, write letters. Let them know we are against this. Call. By the way, Target right now, higher education, the senators in the higher education committee, they are hearing the bill next. And this bill will live or die once again in the Senate. Attend the legislative meetings and show support. Write letters to the editor and opinion pieces. I'll tell you what, I have seen so many editorials this past couple of weeks in state papers. It's really, really heartening to see. And talk to people. And when you go to visit your legislator, to, to visit your representative or senator, take a young person with you. You know, take someone, um, if you go to visit your representative in the UCF area, take a student with you. Have that representative look at you and, and are you going to say, that, yes, we support guns on campus to the student? You know, take that person who's going to be most effective with you. And we can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. Pa Patty, as you can see, is extremely passionate and she's very, very knowledgeable about this subject. Again, I want to thank you for having us here today. Um, you know.